Hey, welcome back to my shop. Today is a momentous day in history. We are getting rid of that anemic piece of excrement. That's right, we're getting rid of the MS-10105 control board, along with MoshiSoft 2016 and that stupid security dongle. Ugh. We're going to replace it with this, the Cohesion 3D laser board. So why get rid of the old controller, and what makes the Cohesion 3D so much better? Firstly, the old board could not cut and engrave at the same time, and even if I tried to do them separately, the origin of both of those layers was not the same. So I'd try to do a square with some text in the center, and the text would be high, it'd be low, it'd be left, it'd be right, and with no real rhyme or reason to it. Annoying. Uh, it, it would always disconnect on me. It would uh, occasionally just stop uh, cutting out my profile and go back to the origin while keeping the laser on the whole time and slicing up my work. I'm done with it. In fact, I'm going to go office space on it. PC load letter? What does that mean? So what things can the new cohesion board do that the other can't? Well, we can control laser intensity. Uh, it does this by P PWM, or pulse width modulation, of the laser on signal, as in uh, it literally is turning laser on and off uh, in little bite-sized chunks uh, so that less energy goes to the cut. Uh, so you still have to use the pot uh, to do the overall intensity, like the max power level, uh, and you, you'll only have a certain range of that max power level that you can cut with. But still, much better than before. Um, the built-in drivers for the st small stepper motors, as well as support for external stepper motor controllers for the X, Y, Z, and A axis. I'm really going to need to build a Z table at this point uh, and a fourth axis rotary, but the board already has support for that built into it. Uh, just great. Uh, it's going to be quieter. Uh, honestly, it's, it's amazing uh, how much quieter it is. Here, take a listen. I mean, just compare those two before and after. It's crazy. Good news is, is that if you don't have the, the much older MS-105 board and you have the M2 Nano, this should be a, a direct drop-in replacement for it if you want it. Uh, highly recommend it. I'm really enjoying it. The little bit of testing I've done it has just been great. So as you can see, the pot is turned all the way up. The name portion is at 1% power, and the cutout is at 100% power with four passes at uh, 20 millimeters per second, I think. Uh, but this is something I could not have done with the old uh, controller and software. I would have had to have cut out the shape and then manually position the shape again and then engrave uh, the lettering in afterwards. I just wanted to be clear. I bought this upgrade with my own money, 200 for the laser board, 40 for the software. Um, uh, there's a link in the description if you want to get one for yourself, uh, but it's just amazing. Uh, really loving it. Hope you enjoy it. So with the board powered off, go ahead and plug in your X and Y axis stepper motors. Uh, don't worry about if you get them mixed up, um, as long as you don't have the auto home uh, function set up in your devices when you go to set it up in Lightburn. Uh, you can follow the instructions that are available on their website. Uh, but as long as you don't have that set up, uh, you can just jog it and see if, uh, as you jog it, the right axis moves. Uh, mine were set up correctly pin-wise, so it moved left and right or back and forth as it should. Uh, so just go ahead and plug them in uh, with the power off. You'll want to make sure that the power is off when you connect uh, the stepper motors, otherwise you could have this happen. Uh, it turns out all I had to do was turn it off, turn it back on, and everything worked fine. Uh, but I had to plug them in originally with the power on when I was experimenting, and this is the result. Hey, that sounds nice. Okay. No problem there, but... We're having issues with the y-axis now. Alright, let's go ahead and wipe. Shut everything down. And try again. Hey, now it's working. So now limit switches. These are 
the uh, the machine's limit switches. Uh, luckily, we can see that the orange and green are for the x-axis. So orange and green are for the x. Because I believe it was originally supposed to plug in right here. So let's go ahead and get some connectors on here. Hey! It is the next morning now. I stayed up till about 1.30 working on this. And uh, after a fresh coffee... And after a fresh cup of coffee, I've... I think I figured this out. Alright, walk along with me on this one. Um, we'll go ahead and power this thing up and I'll show you that it's working and then I'll explain what I did to make it work. And uh, might I just say the short circuit protection on the cohesion board, excellent. Um, yeah. Alright, let's home. Alright, so it should be homing. All right, that seems to work. Let's go to zero, zero. So that'll move to zero, zero position. Excellent. Let's go to zero, 100 on the Y. Or 100, 100. Go. All right, that looks about right. Uh, we'll get into the accuracy of this at a later date. Um, but for now, homing switches are working. Um, let me show you what I did. Okay, so here we have the X axis and this is X min and I plug that into uh, one of, this is normally uh, closed at the moment uh, so we have this did I, yeah, alright. So this is normally closed uh, so the, the switch is wired up is normally closed. We have the ground pin and the signal pin. Uh, and then here on Y max, we have the ground pin and the signal pin. That's it. That, that's all I had to do. Um, easy once you know that you're not supposed to hook it up to the 5 volts. The 5 volts is probably there to power like an optical um, or some other type of end stop, not a mechanical one like I have. Uh, which is just a simple switch. Uh, something I did for troubleshooting, I'd like to show you that real quick. I know nothing screams uh, professional like a, a video snapshot of your screen. Um, so what we did was we went over here to console and if you type uh, capital M, because that matters, M119, uh, what it does is it gives you a readout here and uh, hopefully I can zoom in in post-production to let you see that a little better. But here's what we have. So you have the three that you really are concerned about for homing are X min and Y max. X min is 1.24 and I believe Y max is 1.27, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's the pin number. But at any rate, the ones you're worried about are here. X min and Y max. Those are the homing pins. Zero, uh, so it's a binary solution set. Zero means it's not pressed. It, it doesn't consider that that the carriage has moved over and touched it. Um, one means that it considers the carriage has moved over and touched the switch. So right now it's showing both are zero, zero, which they should be. Um, I'm gonna go jam this into the X min category and I'll show you what you'll we'll see. All right, so I have a clamp on the, the mechanical end stop switch and we'll type M119 again. And you can see here X min is now considered triggered with a value of one. Uh, it would be the same if I did that on the Y. So as you're troubleshooting, if you find that the these values aren't matching up with what it should be over there, so you know what, here, let me just show you. So X min one, value of one, what is that over here? That is X min. So you can see I just got that kind of jumpered out. So this is zero and that's one. Now, if I was to move that wire physically uh, to, that, to this prong so that it's no longer a normally closed circuit, but a normally open circuit, uh, what will happen is uh, you'll, you'll either have to switch this mechanically or you can go into your configuration settings and do it there. Uh, I'll quick show you how to swap them. So power off, grab this SD card after you've powered off. 
come over here. So yeah, grab your SD card with the configuration file on it and transfer them to a safe place while you're messing about. So you open up config, hold down control, press F, and then type in 1.24 and hit enter twice. And there you go, 1.24, there you go, 1.24 on the bottom here. So to switch it, all you have to do is put a exclamation point and it will now consider uh, that to be, essentially instead of looking for it to be normally closed all the time, which is the way it should be, because that way if there's a, a break in your wire, a normally closed has uh, the 3.3 volt signal going to ground constantly. Uh, and if a wire were to be snipped, it would show that it's not going to ground uh, and would cause it to not work. There protecting you from your carriage slamming up against things um, so right now in order to get if I was to save that I would have to change my wiring uh, from what it is now normally closed to normally open in order for this to work properly this some a lot of people get messed up uh, it seems on where your origin should be the origin should be in the bottom left right when you're here in Lightburn you can see here origin bottom left right it homes to here because that's where the limit switches are on all these machines but the origin bottom left now why 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 don't you have the origin up here I don't know but what they do is they take care of it here in the configuration so you have this variable called homing direction and it says home to min right so what that means is that it's gonna go to the minimum value of the X axis that's why the X goes to the left or to the minimum spot and then depending on whether you if you wanted it to go the other way you would change the min here to max home to min means that it will place the x-axis value at zero after it's done homing if you wanted it to have a different value for whatever reason you would just change that here so alpha is x beta is y-axis gamma is z-axis and now why does the y home up at its max and that's because of this it says home to max instead of home to min right so once it goes to max it then inserts a value of 200 into the y-axis so when it's done homing the x-axis has a value of 0 and the y-axis has a value of 200 so if when you set up your z-axis this will be the z-axis uh, this is your y-axis, beta, and of course, your x-axis. So these pins, 1.24 and 1.25, 1.26, 1.27, 1.28, 1.29, these are all your end stop pins. Down here, if you wanted it to home in a certain um, order, you would just delete that hashtag, and then you could have it do x first, and after the x is homed, it'll do y, after the Y, it'll do Z. And then I guess you can also have more limit switches that will actually stop it uh, if it ever were to be hit. Uh, this controls how fast the homing, so there's two homing rates. So X is 50 millimeters, Y is 50 millimeters uh, per second. It says right here millimeters per second. Uh, alpha slow, beta slow is then 25 and 25. And then obviously the Z axis moves much slower because you know less tra less range of travel and let's see and then it'll say how far away do you want it to retract once it's done so you can choose how far back it retracts uh, so if you have like a limit switch with a lot of travel for whatever reason um, I guess that would be one way of accounting for that anyway that's the config settings roughly so you want to save it after you're done put it back onto the SD card bring the SD card over plug it in power it on and then do your tests again using M119 and that's it. Simple. Ish. Head and marked out, marked this out just a little bit. So what we have here is the blue wires here are your 20, this is ground, and this is the, gr the 24 volts for this ground. Uh, this is what fires the laser, 5 volts, and ground. So this is the one that when triggered will shoot, will fire the laser. Uh, what I need to do now is figure out which set of pins are which uh, on the board as my as this particular one has six spots uh, and the laser or the cohesion laser board only has one two three 
four pins. Uh, so what I'll do is remove two of these by pressing down on this little tab here and pulling the wire out, down, pull the wire out, and I'll slide them in here and then I'll cut off this section. Uh, and that should uh, let me just plug her right in. Why is it every time I want to do something, I can't do it. You can't do what? I can't do it. You can't. It's too hard. You can't do it. It's that. too hard for us. Yes. You can do it by yourself. Are you sure? But you, are you kidding me? I said so. Laser fire, laser ground, uh, laser 24 volt ground, and 24 volt. Alright, and that gets plugged into the board like so. So that would be L, G, G, 24, starting from the top. So L, G, G, 24. And the L is from down here. So it's L, G, um, G, 24. Sorry, there. Yeah, so L, G, G, 24, as we looked at it over here on the board. L, G, G, 24. All right. Laser off. All right, let's open it up. All right. Okay, be careful. Be careful. Okay, here we go. It's a little smoky in here, isn't it? Ugh. Can I look at it? Yeah. I couldn't do that before. I couldn't do both. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be great. Now. This is going to be really fun. Oh, I know, right? This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Modulation. Good job. <laughs> That's a good word. <laughs> You're silly. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it, you stopping by and, and hanging out a little bit. And uh, I hope this was helpful for you uh, and that it encourages you to go ahead and bite the bullet, jump in, and uh, upgrade your K40 if you have a, a much older one like mine. Mine is from, I think, 2015, uh, and a friend gave it to me. Uh, but you're, you're going to be happy. It's like a brand new machine. Uh, the, the possibilities are just astounding. Go ahead, do it. You won't be um, disappointed at all. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next time.